Let's get it. All right, so for years I've been telling myself that I'm going to get into embedded programming. I'm going to get into embedded programming. And I've been buying a ton of stuff just to get into embedded programming, and I've never done it. Um, so I'm going to try to make that attempt. And today we're going to be going over how to program for the Arduino using Rust. All right, first and foremost, let's get a high definition of what an Arduino is. Going to my favorite site, Wikipedia. Right, let me scroll down a bit. Arduino is an open source hardware and software company, project and user community that designs and manufactures single board microcontrollers and microcontroller kits for building digital devices. So a high level summary, Arduino is the company, but they also have like projects and a community and they build microcontroller boards and kits. And if you look over here, this is a picture of a Arduino Uno, which is what I'm going to be using today. So moving on, this is the AVR HAL. What is the AVR HAL, you ask? Well, hardware abstraction layer, which is the HAL, of AVR microcontrollers, a common board, for example, Arduino, based on the AVR device crate. So more or less, we're going to be using this crate, or this repo, I should say, to program our board. And we go down to the quick start. You'll need nightly Rust compiler for compiling Rust code for our AVR. Note, due to a regression version after nightly 2021, January 7th, are currently broken, see, blah, 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 blah. Please use that version of the compiler for now. The correct version will be installed automatically. Okay, so what they're noting here is that um, seemingly at some point in time, one of the nightly versions broke whatever was making this work or allowing this to work, and it, I don't think it's been fixed yet. So when you're writing code for your Arduino, the Rust version is always pinned to a certain version, and they say here that it's going to be um, the correct version will be installed automatically. How is that happening, you say? Because I was curious about it. There's a file called rust-2chain.toml. And in here, they put in the version of Rust that you should be using for the project. And when you're in the directory or in this project, you, Cargo is going to see this file and know I'm supposed to be using this version of Rust. So that's what they meant by automatically. Moving onward. So next, they asked you to install this thing called Rave Dude. And this just seems amazing because, one, it's a tool which seamlessly integrates flashing your board into the usual cargo workflow. What that means is all you really have to do is do like cargo run or cargo run bin or whatever, and they do everything else for you. Like they find the board, they upload your code to the board, and if you have a serial connection you have to listen to, you can also listen to your serial connection via via them. It's actually really, really nice. So one thing that's great about this repo is that they have examples. And they have examples for a number of different boards. Um, and the way to go about finding your examples is to go into the examples directory, find your board, and then in there, they have a bin which has a lot of the different programs. So let me go into that and show you what it looks like real quick, and then we can try to run it. So going into examples, see the number of different boards here. We want this one. And then in the source bin, we see we have a number of different examples. And the example they want us to run is Blink. So let's look at this real quick. Uh, some things you'll notice off the top is that there is no standard library. There is no main, mainly because this is an embedded project. So um, you don't have the luxury of having a operating system under you. And in terms of where the program enters from, you don't have main. You need to tell it where to enter from. So that's why they have this, Arduino HAL entry. So this is going to be our main point of entry. 
Um, they have something for panics as well. I'm not too exact on how this works, but I know it's needed. And if you come down, we have the Arduino peripherals. We're unwrapping them, seemingly. We're taking them and unwrapping them. We're getting access to pins, and then we're going to set the digital output for the pin 13, which is the default pin on the Arduino. It's like the, the LED that's embedded into it that you use for your Hello World, and your Hello World is typically turning that light on and off. And we're going to set it to high. And then we have our infinite loop here, which you, you typically see in Arduino programs. And here we have a toggle, uh, toggle, which I believe is just turning it on and off. And then we have a delay for how long it waits. And then we do the same thing over and over and over again. But the last one being a different wait time. All right, so this is the project of my personal computer. And let me go into examples, Arduino, Uno. And what's the example that they want me to run again? Then let's see what's here. Uh, blink, Uno Blink. So I'm gonna try to run that, but I'm also trying to split the screen so you can see uh, my Arduino. Uh, so you can see my Arduino and it already has, it's already blinking because I've been messing around with things and there's already some code on the Arduino. So the way that Arduino works is um, once you upload code to it, the code is there. And anytime you give it a power source, it will start running again with the code that's already on the board. Um, so I just have some old code on the board. All right, so let me run this and so you can see how it looks. Run bin uno blank. So as you can see, like it did stuff. It flashed the board and like the blinking pattern has now changed. So let me go back to just my external monitor so you can see what's on the screen. And let me even scroll up a bit so we can read through this. So here's me starting the command, bin uno blink. AVR dude, AVR device initialized and ready to accept the instructions. It's reading, it's erasing the chip. It looks like it's adding my file. It's flashing to the board. That's the writing process. This looks like the verification of how many bytes were flashed. Some more output, some more output. Even looks like it has a reading portion. Reading on chip flash data, okay. So then, oh, it looks like it also verifies what was flashed on, which is nice. And then it says, done, thank you. And then afterwards, we have our console, which is just here, and it's just running. So I can even quit out of my console, and the program will still run on my Arduino. And you can see that in just a second. So if I switch that, I exit out of my console terminal, and the program on the Arduino is still running but it looks like it's flashing fast enough that you can't really see the light turn on on and off but if you look at the reflection in the this thing you can see it does turn off and on it's just the speed of it all right so now that you've seen the example run you might be thinking how do i start my own project and there was a lot of boilerplate stuff there that could be difficult to reassemble especially if i don't understand everything no worries, this project got your back. Um, they have a section on starting your own project and they state that the best way to start your own project is via the AVR HAL template, which you can easily use with Cargo Generate. Now, Cargo Generate was new to me, so I had to look into it for a second, but more or less what it allows you to do is you have a template file and based off inputs, you could like fill in what is needed. And let me show you the template file because this is actually pretty cool. So here's their template file, right? And if you go to 
Uh, I think it's the main. Like we looked at all this stuff, and you you may not understand all this stuff to begin with. You may not need to understand it because it's more or less boilerplate. But they have it here for you. And then down here, they have uh, a case statement. And then based off the cases, based off the input that you select, they write whatever code is needed. So it really is just a templating language that they use to like fill in a entire repo for you. And in terms of their choices, I thought this was actually really cool. So I'm just going to go over it. Uh, they have a cargo generate TOML file where they have a placeholder board string. Here's a prompt that you will see when you generate a project. Which board do you see? And then here are your choices that you can select from. And it defaults to Arduino. And then everything else you kind of just get for free. So we looked at the Rust tool chain thing, which pins the Rust to a certain version. That's already here. That's the stuff you get. And everything else too. So let's let's run this command so you can see it in action. Um, and then let's mess around with our own project. So coming here, this is the command. Let me copy this. Oh, also you would have to install cargo generate. That's not a default thing. You you do have to, to install it. So I ran the command, right? And it's asking me for a project name because it's going to take a project name and then um, like create the repo using that project name. So I'm going to call this Arduino video. And these are the choices that we looked at which board do we want to use? And we're going with the Arduino Uno. And then I should be able to go to Arduino video and I have my project. Now going back to the instructions, I get to see what I can do next. If I recall correctly then, I think the template um, file has a readme that tells you how to use it. So in the template readme, you have it tells you what you need to have installed, which is Cargo Generate and uh, Rave Dude. But then after that, in terms of running the, the default project that is on here, like that, that main file we looked at, you just use Cargo Run. So let me show you that in action. All right, so it compiled, it did all the AVR dude stuff, and you can see, or at least visually see, that the the blinking rate has changed to whatever the um, the new main file that was uploaded to it was or is. All right, so with that, we've reached the end of the video. Um, I want to give a quick shout out to everybody that works on these projects because I know that there's a lot of information here and a lot of things that I don't understand that happens underneath the hood. And because they've made it so easy to work on this stuff, the barrier of entry is now very, very minimal. Um, so yeah, thank you. Um, also, one quick nerd thing that I, I ran into that I was really appreciative of is uh, in Cargo Generate, like I was trying to figure out how it worked and looking at stuff. And then I went into the parser and realized it's a pest file. And I was like, oh, I know this, I know this. Uh, that, 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 it warmed my heart. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so yeah, if you like the video, hit like, subscribe, yada yada. yada. Till next time, peace.